gotta be honest with you guys today, pretty irritated. I'm gonna tell you why real quick. So, I had this whole video done yesterday. Fully done, edited, ready to go. I was about to upload it. And then the file got corrupted and I lost it. And to say I lost it in that moment was an understatement. I was pissed. Heated. Heated. But the show must go on. It's a little irritating because I was going to do Spy Classroom today. But we're going to do Trigon again today. So strap in. To be fair, we do have an interesting episode today that's all about Wolfwood. We learn about his past, and we learn just how tragic it actually is. It's, it's not a happy past, to say the least. So, let's just get straight into it today and talk about Trigon Stampede, Episode 6, again. So our episode begins today a little bit dark, actually, as we see a man running for his life through the desert. As we see that Wolfwood is the one chasing him down. Now in a panic, this man takes his gun and shoots at Wolfwood and actually hits him multiple times. As the man says, ha, some executioner you are. But our boy Wolfwood's not going to go down that easy. As we see, he takes a vial of this medicine that we saw in our previous episode and he drinks it. As we see that he gets back up to on his feet. And he's healed. He looks demonic right here. As the man says, You're a monster. As Wolfwood guns him down right then and there. It's a hell of a way to start our episode, to say the least. Murder. But it's here we actually transition to our crew. As they're driving along. And there's this really somber atmosphere hanging over them after the events of our last episode. Everybody seems very down. As Roberto tells Vash, you can take the sand streamer from the port up ahead to get the Jula. As Meryl asks him, so does that mean we're going to leave the car behind here? But Roberto tells her, no, this is where we check out. We need to return to headquarters. We got to write up that article of ours. And naturally, Meryl is not very happy about this. She wants to stick with Vash at this point. As Roberto asks him, you're fine with that, right? You're fine with us getting out of here? As Vash just nods at him that it's fine. And again, we see Meryl feel some type of way about this. And it's here we transition to the sand streamer itself, which I actually do remember from the original uh, anime years ago. I remember this. It was always a very cool concept. And it's here as we see Vash and Wolfwood boarding without Meryl and Roberto, he says, you know, I thought those guys were your buddies, man. As Vash tells him, no way. I don't want to put them in danger. As Wolfwood tells him, no? That's, that's pretty cold, man. But it's here as Meryl and Roberto are watching them board, Meryl, again, hates this as she says, I don't understand why we're separating here. As Roberto tells her, yeah, I didn't think you would. As she takes a picture out and tells Roberto, how can we let the humanoid typhoon get away? And as we see it's the picture from the previous episode, Roberto says, he's just too much trouble. As he tells her exactly what I'm thinking as well as he says, what kind of monster looks the same for 20 years? As she tells him, what, are you scared now? As he tells her, say what you will. We're writing for a tabloid here. It's nothing worth risking our lives over. Imagine risking your lives for, like, People Magazine, guys. Like, who would do that? <laughs> but Meryl is not having it. As she gets in his face and says, then it's okay if we're not risking our lives, right? As we see that she is not backing down on this topic at all. And it's here as we see the sand streamer leave and we go to Vash and Wolfwood again. There's that same somber atmosphere. As Vash asks him, what's your end game here? Why are you following me around? As Wolfwood tells him, I'm your babysitter, man. You're a spoiled brat who can't even kill bad guys. Honestly, you should be thanking me. But Vash being the pacifist that he is says, you don't get to choose who lives and dies. As Wolfwood tells him, you're still going on about that, huh? As Vash asks him an important question here, as he says, 
Don't you have something you want to protect more than anything else, too? As Wolfwood tells him, all right, enough of this shit. The only reason you've survived this long is because other people died instead. As Vash tells him, that's not what I mean, and you know that. As Wolfwood tells him, man, I don't understand you at all. All I hear is talk from you. You can't even wipe your own ass. Any point you try to make is redundant. But it's here in this split second. As we see a man approaching them with the same kind of guns that Wolfwood has. We see his past come back to haunt him. As he says, run Needle Noggin! As the man starts opening fire on Vash. As Vash is able to quickly get away and maneuver around him as him and the man start fighting. As Vash sends him flying. And it's here as the man is laying on the ground. Wolfwood recognizes him as he says, What are you doing here, Livio? And it's here in this scene, we take a trip down memory lane as we transition to the orphanage that freaking Wolfwood grew up in as we see Livio coming to live with them. And almost immediately, these two hit it off with each other because Wolfwood probably sees a part of himself in Livio. And it's here as we see them spending time together and growing closer over the time they spent together. They basically become inseparable and become brothers. And it's here as we transition back to the present as we see this man, Livio, get back up. Wolfwood screams at him and says, no, you can't kill him, Livio. As Livio starts chasing Vash down, who's running for his life right here. As we see Vash runs into the security on the sand streamer and he tells them, Don't come over here, you idiots! But it's too late. As we see Vash is able to slip away and the guards come face to face with Livio. But we'll come back to that because it's here we transition to a more fun scene. As we see Meryl and Roberto peeling fucking wheels going crazy through the desert trying to catch up to them as roberto says what are you doing are you trying to get fired in your first year as meryl tells him all right i get it i'll drive safely as roberto says no you don't i'm saying to let this go as she tells him all right roberto i get it and he says fine but just remember that this is an undercover report we're going to pull out at the first sign of trouble. You hear me? As Meryl tells him, all right, I get it, Roberto. And he tells her, do you, though? Do you really get it, Meryl? No, she doesn't. But it's here all of a sudden. We see them get surrounded by the Bad Lads gang. And they are completely surrounded here. And man, I gotta say, I feel bad for Roberto getting dragged around by Meryl. He's a grown-ass man letting this girl drag him around. And look at the trouble they get into. Man, poor Roberto De Niro. <laughs> but it's here, unfortunately, that we're about to get a bit more serious. As we transition back to the orphanage. As we see these strange men and women walking in there. As they take out this strange piece of paper and say, You must be Nicholas. You've passed the selection test. As they actually start clapping for him, but it's a very ominous atmosphere. As they say, Congratulations, child of blessing. And it's here as these people are actually taking Wolfwood out of the orphanage. He takes one last look at the people there. Doesn't see Livio. And he leaves with them. And it's in this scene right here. I'll give you guys a fair warning. It's going to get a little bit intense. As we just see. Tech, test subject HL106. Chemical aptitude S+. As we see Wolfwood strapped to this machine. And we see the horrendous experiments they're doing on him. As we hear. In addition to repairing any damage done to your body. This drug rebuilds and strengthens your cells. It can heal any wound. Sounds like a dream, right? As we see the damn near torture that they're putting Wolfwood through right here. And this entire scene is trippy as hell. It seriously is, as we hear. The accelerated growth comes at a price. But as we transition to Wolfwood strapped to a table... 
his body in horrendous condition. As we just hear, he's grown so much in just a few months. What a monster. And it's in this moment, last week's episode hits so much harder because we've realized that Wolfwood knows exactly what Rolo was going through. So that makes that scene make even more sense when he executed him. He really was putting him out of his misery. And it's here as we transition to a now fully grown Wolfwood in his cell, we see he has a plan to escape. As we see he does just that with the help of the drug that he's been hoarding. As we see he makes a uh, quick escape to the exit as he gets gunned down by security. As we hear the doctor yell, what are you doing? Don't hurt him. He's a test subject. But it's here as we see Wolfwood ingest the drug. We see his wounds start to heal, just like Rolo's did in our previous episode. As the doctor says, oh my god, how splendid. As Wolfwood gets up and sprints towards them and jumps over them to get to the window to escape. As he tells himself, I'm going back to the orphanage now. But unfortunately in life, things are never really that simple. As all of a sudden, we see his body contort and distort in the middle of the air like a rag doll as he stopped in his tracks. It's pretty horrific looking. And it's here, in this next scene, we meet a real bastard of a character. As we see Wolfwood in his cell again, as the doors open and we hear, how is he maintaining his own will? As we hear, S plus boy, you have a gift. Starting today, you shall join the Eye of Michael. As Wolfwood charges at him, but he sends him flying without even touching him as he says, I'm sure you'll like it. We worship a beautiful angel. As Wolfwood tells him, I don't believe in any god. But he tells him, do you believe in punishment then? As he says, you will eliminate all abnormalities in Master Knives' noble plan. Rebels. Fugitives. Losers. As Wolfwood tells him, what a disgusting religion. That's a hard pass for me, you idiot. But it's here. We see just how bad his situation really is. As we see Livio appear in front of him and the man says, this is your little brother. No. As Wolfwood is clearly shocked that Livio is here, of all places. As the man says, I hear he volunteered himself to follow after you. What beautiful, fraternal love. If you won't join us, he says he'll work for us instead. As Wolfwood says, damn you and your freaky blue hair. But this man really didn't like that very much as he slams Wolfwood into the ground with this power of his as he says, don't talk about my hair like that. As he tells Wolfwood, it's futile to resist. My power isn't mere nerve control or electrical impulses. As Wolfwood says, Livio, please run. But we see that it's too late. As the man tells him, love, attachment. I simply don't get it. There's no need for emotion. As we see, he slams Wolfwood into the ceiling. And all of a sudden, we just hear, Blue Summers! As he lets Wolfwood go, and we see that it was the doctor that stopped him. As he tells Blue Summers, please be gentle with him. He has S-plus drug compatibility, the highest class. As Blue Summers says, oh, sorry, I didn't know about that. Priest William. And it's here as they leave Wolfwood completely battered and bruised, beaten. He says, I'm sorry, Livio. Man, in this episode, we really see how harsh Wolfwood's life has been. He's a guinea pig. He's been a guinea pig his whole life against his will so he can save Livio. It's kind of wild. Wolfwood might have the worst past out of everyone so far. Probably even more than Vash which is kind of crazy to say. And it's here as we transition back to present time. We hear Wolfwood tell himself, please, don't make me kill you, Livio. As we see that Livio and security are both chasing Vash down right now. 
as security actually starts unloading into Livio, literally li riddling him with bullets. But Wolfwood realizes that, wait, he's healing without the meds. What's going on? As Vash runs up to Wolfwood and says, who is that guy? But Wolfwood tells him, it's none of your business. As Vash says, someone's going to get killed here. As Wolfwood tells him, you shouldn't be worrying about other people right now. But Vash tells him, you know him, don't you? You have to help him. But Wolfwood reluctantly tells him, it's too late. But it's here we see Vash doesn't like that answer, as he actually runs towards Livio, guns blaring, and says, Stop this. It's me you want, right? As him and Livio start fighting, and he actually hits him with the butt of his gun, holding him down. As we hear Livio squeak out the words, I have to catch up. And as security comes and closes in on them, we see Livio use that moment to get Vash off of him. As we see that Livio is about to gun Vash down. But we see that Wolfwood gets in the way and blocks it as he says, I told you to stand back, Needle Noggin. I can't let you two kill each other, no matter what. And it's here somehow. Our situation gets even worse. As we see a car running upside the sand streamer. As we see it's Zazie and Blue Summers in it. As Zazie says, ha! The Punisher's in a bit of a bind, it seems. If his brother dies, other children at the orphanage will be next. Until they find one with good drug compatibility, that is. As we hear Blue Summer say, humans have such bad taste. He's purely trying to protect too much. And it's here we see Wolfwood knock Livio out for a second, as he tells Vash, Hide already, damn it! If you don't, I'll beat your ass myself! As we see even more guards surrounding them. As we hear Blue Summer say, You still can't give up your little brother, huh? Shouldn't you just accept reality already? As we see, he uses this power of his to destroy the Sand Streamer's interior. As Wolfwood realizes, oh no, the ship's going off course. As we see that its new destination is Hopeland Orphanage, where he grew up. And it's here as if the situation couldn't get worse. We see these things attach onto the ship as we hear the most gorgeous and terrifying bandits you'll ever see. As we see they're getting boarded by the Bad Lads gang and Wolfwood's like, the Bad Lads gang? Now of all times? As Blue Summer says, so, what's your next move, Punisher? Who will you kill? Who will you save? And with all these thoughts swirling through Wolfwood's head, our episode ends. Now, I really like this episode. I feel this episode was very much needed. While I myself do know Wolfwood's past a bit because I've seen the original series, a lot of people, for a lot of people, this is their first experience with Trigon. So this episode was very needed because we really do a deep dive into Wolfwood's character here and we see just how tragic his past really is and with the situation as bad as it is right here wolfwood's gonna have to make a very tough decision next episode i feel like and i'm very much looking forward to it because it's gonna be sad i bet i get that feeling but you guys let me know your thoughts on this episode down below i would love to hear it but until next time guys i hope you have a great day week month and year and until then deuces and have a blessed day i'll see you guys next time.